Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, January 17th, 2022. I'm one of your host, Blessing, Adioye Jr. Joining me is my fellow Force 30 Under 30, a.k.a. Lil Croy Poppy himself, a.k.a. Tim motherfucking Gettys. Another Monday, another great time to hang out with Bless. Let's oh, do yeah, it, Tim. baby. Tim, how are you doing this Monday morning? I'm doing great. Doing real good. Energized over the weekend. Excited to talk about video games. We got the Moon Knight trailer coming out tonight. Of course, we'll Ooh. be reacting to that tomorrow morning. Woo! Excited. How hyped are you for that trailer? I don't know anything about Moon Knight except that he's being played by Oscar Isaac, and that alone gets me excited. I am very, very, very excited about it. Like that, yeah, that alone is exciting, but also Moon Knight is a badass character. So this is about to be real cool. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm also excited because uh, Greg Miller stopped by this weekend and dropped off some merch. Mm -hmm. And he dropped off this crop top sweat sweatshirt, which you probably can't tell it's a crop, it's a crop top because the way my camera is. But like, I've never, well, wore, I don't think up. I've ever worn any crop top piece of clothing. And like, I don't hate it. Oh no, you can't wear a shirt under there. I, Look at you teasing us. Yeah, but like we're on Twitch, you know. I, I can't what? mess with yeah, that. I can't a little bit, good. a little bit of tummy rips not gonna show it. And you're the only one that people want to see, you know. Everyone else is. Fat. You don't want to see that. I did. I did try it out without the shirt under it. And I was looking in the mirror and I was like, I might need to do some sit ups, man. I might need to do some sit ups for actually reveal this because, like, I wasn't. I, I don't. I don't look the way I looked when I was 19 years old. You know what I mean? Like, I've. Mm -hmm. I put on a little bit of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's not mm -hmm. obvious, but like, hey. <laughs> but you know, 27, everything changes, Tim. Everything changes. <laughs> but of course, shout out to this. I was a little bit upset at first because like he came through, he dropped off the stuff. And when Greg texted me uh, beforehand, he was like, hey, what merch do you want out of our new merch drop? And I was like, Greg, give me everything. <laughs> I'll take every single thing that we have. And he came through with just the crop top, crop top sweatshirt and then like one other shirt. And I was like, damn, like I really like the hoodie. But like, I'm again, I'm not a crop top person. Yeah. And I put it on and I was like, you know what, man? Maybe I'm maybe I'm a crop top person now. You know, the, the thing is, now. Greg came to my house because all the merch is at my house. <laughs> so he came to my place to to get everyone's orders to take it to them. But really, there's just mm. a bunch of boxes of shit. So we had to just riff through it all and look at the sizes of everything. It wasn't organized well at all. So uh, I'll go check a look, take a look, and a check a check a look, uh, check a look. and and see if um, there's any more on small the, stuff. On the you. on the dock, Tim uh, Greg is saying Tim gave the small stuff to Gia. This isn't my fault. This is mm. Tim's fault. I can't call. I gave her the crew in to defend myself. Nah, eh, you could, you could call in and defend that yourself. That makes a lot of sense because I'm the only small size. That kind of funny. Yeah. Even though I'm six foot four as well, yeah. but I'm the only small size here, and so yeah, that actually lines up to why yeah. we wouldn't it's, have. It's no good. The rest of the merch available. Huh. It's big on her. Huh. It's real big on her. Yeah. Huh. She looks adorable it's, though. It's kind of funny. Yeah, com slash store. She's kind of funny. Dot com though, slash store. You know store. what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, that's true. She isn't on the content. You know, I'm on the content. Do you know yeah. what I do on the content? I talk about today's stories, which include what Phil Spencer thinks about Project Spartacus, what Corey Barlog thinks about PC games, and more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. It's going to week at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of the show to patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping for you ps i love you xoxo is recording later today and it's our re-review of horizon zero dawn uh, i played the dlc greg has been playing and janet has platinumed the game uh, you can get your questions and write-ins uh in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to be a part of the show and catch that episode when it goes up for everyone tomorrow also super cool there is a new yeah i'm very excited for that actually uh there's a new episode of x cast that went up over the weekend with the full crew talking about xbox expectations for exclusives in 2022 yes. you can catch that right now on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and on podcast services around the globe and then lastly uh do you want to help us out you can do that by filling out an rt podcast survey all about kind of funny podcasts it only says kind of funny podcast on the thing but they mean all of our podcasts it just takes a few minutes you can help uh it helps our network understand and what you like about us you can go check that out on kind of funny.com slash podcast survey that is kind of funny.com slash podcast survey thank you to our patreon producers james davis aka at james james davis makes 
Blackjack, and Pranksy. Today we're brought to you by HelloFresh, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, mm -hmm. let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> it's time for some news. We have five stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one, an interesting one. Phil Spencer responds to Project Spartacus. I'm pulling from Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle. Microsoft's head of gaming has said he expects PlayStation to follow in Xbox's footsteps when it comes to launching an anticipated Game Pass rival. Details on an Xbox Game Pass competitor service reportedly being planned by PlayStation emerged in December and picked up Steam last week. According to documents seen by Bloomberg, the new service is codenamed Spartacus and will combine the current PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now services, phasing out the branding of the latter. It's expected to launch for PS4 and PS5 this spring and to be structured across three payment tiers. The first will reportedly include existing PlayStation Plus benefits, such as online play and free monthly titles. The second will offer a large catalog of games like Xbox Game Pass, although not first party titles at launch. The third will add extended demos, game streaming, and a library of classic PlayStation games. Asked about the rumors by IGN, Xbox uh, boss Phil Spencer said he thought a Game Pass-like service from Sony was inevitable and that he expects it to make new releases available day one in the subscription, which is really interesting and I want to circle back to in a second. Quote, I don't mean it to sound like we've got it all figured out. But I think the right answer is allowing your customers to play the games they want to play where they want to play them and giving them choice about how they build their library and being transparent with them about what our plans are in terms of our PC initiatives and our cross gen initiatives and other things he said. Uh, he continues, so when I hear others doing things like Game Pass or coming to BC, it makes sense to me because I think that's the right answer. He continues, I don't really look at it as validation. I actually, when I'm, when I'm talking to our teams, I talk about it as inevitability. So for us, we should continue to innovate, continue to compete, because the things that we're doing might be advantages that we have in the market today, but they're just based on us going first, not that we've created something that no one else can go create. Shout out to Uncle Phil, man. What a Shout badass. out to Uncle Phil. Uh, I like it, and this is, this is still Phil Spencer. I like it because it feeds our energy on what are, what are the next things that we should be working on as we continue to build out the things we've done in the past. Because I think the right answer is to ship great games, ship them on PC, ship them on console, ship them on cloud, make them available day one in the subscription. And I expect that's what our competitor will do. End quote. Tim off fucking Gettys. Where are, you, where are you at with Phil Spencer's uh, statement here? It sounds like you like it. Here's the thing. Oh, yeah, I definitely like this. Also, I haven't really talked about this Project Spartacus anywhere, but like, how exciting is that? That it might actually happen. And it kind of seems likely at this point. Now, it is the type of thing, and I don't, you, you might know uh, more than I, I do, especially you and Greg, I know, uh, talked about it already a little bit. But like, what, what is your expectation for this? If you had to bet, when this actually happens because i know people are saying spring 2022 we're we're getting there you know like what when do you actually see this happening and i guess first off do you see this happening oh yeah i want i 1000 percent see this happening i think i mean i not to take a word that phil spencer has used multiple times now but i think it is inevitable just in the case of with xbox game pass and with games getting more expensive things moving up to 70 dollars value is becoming more and more of an important factor in terms of how audiences interact with their games what they come to expect in terms of how they want to play their games i think the the shift to game pass and putting the their uh, xbox's first party games on game pass has really done a big thing in terms of how audiences perceive value and what they come to expect in terms of being able to play the games that they want to play on the playstation side right like the whole strategy for PlayStation has been has has leaned towards, hey, we have dope ass exclusive first party games that we've nurtured and created over the course of last generation, especially, right? It's been four generations of them doing this and now it's turning to five generations. But PS4 generation is, is when I think you really saw them get into the flow of, oh, not only are we putting out games, we're putting out some of the best games on our platform and those are games that you can only get on our platform. And so when you're thinking about PlayStation and you're thinking about the reasons to get a PlayStation, you're thinking about Spider-Man, you're thinking about Horizon, you're thinking about God of War or Last of Us or Ghost of Tsushima. But that comes with the thing of now that we're in the PS5 generation and games have gotten more expensive and they become $70, you have 
what seemed to be a fork, what seems to be a fork in the road with Xbox and PlayStation in terms of, hey, as PlayStation, we're going to continue doing what we're doing, and we're going to continue to treating our games as premium, and we're going to continue promoting our platform as the box, right? Whereas Xbox is like, hey, we're going to promote our platform as a platform that you can ex- that uh, if you want to be a part of our ecosystem, you can be there on PC or you can be there on Xbox, right? That all makes sense, and I think on the PlayStation side, in terms of Spartacus, I think you see a bit of friction between that strategy and what audiences are starting to expect. And I think you got to react to that in some way. And I think you've already seen them start to react to it here and there. PS Plus, the last year, we've talked about it a lot on PS Love You. PS Plus, like the last year, and maybe year and a half at this point, has been pretty phenomenal in terms of not only getting great PS Plus titles, but getting a lot of day and date PS Plus titles, things like Maquette, things like Operation Tango, um, uh, Hunter's Arena Legend. I always uh, butcher that name, but like the Battle Royale that came out in August, right? There are a lot of games on PS Plus, Destruction All Stars that are coming out day and date, Bug Snacks when that came out on, on, on when the PS5 released, um, that feel that feel like a shift in the ideology of what PlayStation is doing with their subscription service, right? Or with their <clears throat> with their like ongoing services side of things. I think that flows naturally into something like Project Spartacus, where now, instead of having it be a thing of PS Plus, you know, where you go for your online and your PS Plus games, and PS Now, where PS Now has had a marketing issue, right? It is like streaming only. It is, hey, here are some legacy games and here are some PS4 games as well. But it's also like, the technology is something that not everybody loves, right? PS4 games are the only games that are downloadable and some PS2 games too, but you only have like 18 PS2 games on the service and it's not the greatest selection of PS2 games. I think taking that and beefing it up and rolling it into PS Plus is a really smart move. But I think the smarter move would be what Phil Spencer is kind of insinuating here in terms of him thinking about how it's inevitable that you're going to see games released day and date on Project Spartacus. I think that is the big takeaway here that is interesting and I'd like to dig into, but I'm, I'm going to shut up for a second because I want to hear uh, some from you, Tim. Like, where are you at with all that? I mean, it, it's all exciting. And look, I think that that is the future that I would like to see because I, I truly believe that the the more that the industry can kind of like work together and like support good ideas i think it's just a better thing for everybody to make more money to make better uh quality titles for gamers to have more things to enjoy like it's just kind of like it helps everybody uh along the line right um i am not confident in this day one thing that sony will put out first party titles on whatever this service is i do think that it's still kind of a uh, a half step but i even then it's only a half step towards game pass i don't necessarily think it's a bad decision for sony themselves um but i would be very surprised if we si- we saw last of us three on a game pass type service day one on playstation like i do think the smaller things destruction all stars like that type of stuff the the ps uh plus stuff that we're getting now i can kind of see them maybe going like a step above that even but like i still struggle to see a world where in the next couple of years we're seeing day and date first party releases from sony on in the same way that that xbox is uh but at the same time i wouldn't be surprised if at some point like the, the the code is cracked and that is just like what everyone actually expects i just don't think we're there yet so i don't think sony mm. is going to do that until they actually have to because they're obviously killing it right now uh but on the other side i think that this this conversation is interesting from phil because it is kind of putting out there the worlds that he wants to see and is kind of being like yeah this is i'm not saying it's the right way to do it but uh proof's in the pudding it kind of is the right way to do it and it's inevitable it's like it's using language to kind of position xbox in a a leadership leadership position which they are in currently in terms of this type of value in gaming and i think that that's an interesting thing where we look at, at back back in the day it used to be like who's the 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 leader it just xbox or playstation right now i think that it's splintered so much that there's just different roads they're going down so multiple leaders can exist and not even get in each other's way uh but him saying things like make them available day one in the subscription that's what i expect our competitor will do that is kind of like throwing the shit the gauntlet down of just like I mean, hey, like if this is what they should do and I think they're going to do, does he really think they're going to do that? I'm not so sure, but I do think, I do know that he wants them to. I do know that he believes in that because that just helps. It's all about education, man. The more people understand, yeah, it really is 
like the moment it's it no longer has to be described as the netflix for gaming where it's mm-hmm. just like that this is what gaming is i think that'll go very far the other thing i wanted to bring up is one of the major cornerstones of what phil's talking about and of game pass is the ecosystem that xbox has built with pc and with cloud and with all of it just working seamlessly i don't expect playstation to do that you know i think that it is uh an insane uh assumption to say it's inevitable that playstation titles will also end up on pc because we didn't have that infrastructure having said that guess what they've been doing the last couple years building out that infrastructure little by little hiring the right teams to make sure that there is a pc port team right like all of that like if you start looking at all the little breadcrumbs and the seeds that have been dropped over the last couple years a narrative is forming i just think that spring 2022 is too early to see that all crystallize together into something but at the end of the day playstation's in a great position where they don't need to go all the way at the beginning because just giving us backwards compatibility on a PlayStation console will be huge. That's the thing. You, you've touched on a lot of things that I that feed into the way I think about this as well, too. And the place I want to start, right? I want to go back to the making games available on day one thing. Because I'm right there with you that it's hard for me to even think about a near future and even a far future where we'll see the biggest and most premium of the PlayStation first party titles appear on a Game Pass like service, just because that is just not their strategy. That is not what they built. And they're having so PlayStation has had so much success doing things the way they're done that I from a on a on the on a business sense, right? Or in a business sense, them doing that, I think is kind of a bad idea just in terms of, yeah, they could build a service and that service would do gangbusters, but they're making so much money off of first party sales that I don't, I just don't think that makes sense whatsoever. I think what does make sense is to figure out how to, how to do something along those lines in a way where you can have it be kind of a tiered thing. We, uh, this this is an idea that I floated on PS Love You before. And the more and more I think about it, the more and more I, 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 I kind of believe it where You've had the announcements last year of not only PlayStation acquiring studios like Housemark and, and, and Bluepoint and other studios, but you've had them announce partnerships with smaller studios, studios like Jade Raymond Studios, those Deviation Studios that was announced at uh, Summer Games Fest kickoff that is working on a first part, per, first person shooter game. There is <clears throat> Firewalk Studio that I believe is also working on a first person shooter game, right? You have PlayStation doing the, and even before Housemark was acquired, right? It was a similar thing of, Returnal came out on PS5 as a PlayStation quote unquote first party game, a PlayStation Studios game, but Housemark was not a PlayStation first party studio at that time. Now they are, and now I think they've they've proven themselves as being like worthy of being like amongst like the um like the higher tier PlayStation studios, right? Maybe not a naughty dog yet, but they're on that come up uh, right now. In terms of the studios that PlayStation partners with though that aren't totally first party, I wonder for PlayStation if they can build out build out like a tier system of, yeah, the God of Wars, the Horizons, you're not going to see up here on a Project Spartacus. But what about the Destruction All-Stars of the world? What about the, and I know Destruction All-Stars is like not a great example because people don't like that game, but what if, what are- You what guys about understand what we mean, this? like tier yeah. level of, of game, yeah. Yeah, like even the Returnals, right? Which Returnal came out and was a full price first party, again, first party game, but at the time of its release was not under, uh, Housemark was not under PlayStation and you wonder how PlayStation views that title, right? Like at the time, they probably viewed that title of, hey, this is something that's pushing the PS5 and is pushing, um, you know, we're pushing as a first party thing, but we're not we're not treating it like a last of us we're not treating it like a horizon we're not treating it like that like a ratchet and clank that type of title right ratchet and clank probably still for playstation was the premier playstation title of the year um and so you kind of have that that tiered system already that you probably could put in place and you could look at as oh yeah the the jade raymond studios we're gonna put this on project spartacus day one uh kevin in assets i dropped a graphic and i want to also reference and give a shout out to the homie uh joseph uh over on twitter aka mr badbit at mr badbit on twitter this morning he tweeted out something that i I somewhat agree with or i could at least see the vision of of uh he says i see playstation's spartacus as their disney plus the xbox's netflix with game pass sony picking and choosing which of their games go day and date and discounts on their premiere titles expanding backwards compatibility with ps1 on PS2, PS3, and Vita slash PSP, and then expanded indie support. And then he asked what you think. But he uses the graphic um, of somebody just left the call. Oh, okay, it was my sorry. call. For a second, Wait. I was like, oh, did Kevin leave? Um, Wait, where's the graphic? It's in assets. Oh, the, in assets, it should be yeah. PlayStation's like 22 games for 2022. You can pull that up in a second. But uh, 
for what Joseph's talking about here, right? He took he said that, and then he posted the thumbnail of this 22 games in a, a 2022 thing that PlayStation put out. And when I scroll through, it is a mixture of, yeah, you have like the Horizon Forbidden West that's coming out this year. You have Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, which is out on PC. You have Elden Ring, right, which is a big third party title. You, but you go through and then you get to Dying Light 2, God of War Ragnarok, uh, Gran Turismo 7, Gotham Knights, Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy. Then you get to things like Ghostwire Tokyo, where it's like, dude, I forgot that was coming out this year. I forgot that that was a PlayStation exclusive game coming out this year, right? And part of that is they're just not they're they've not been marketing it as hard. But another thing of that is that we just don't put that on the level of like a God of War, right? Like that is that is what I could see as a contender for something that could be day and date on something like Project Spartacus. Then you go through and it's Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, Rainbow Six Extraction, uh, which is coming out on Game Pass, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and then you get to Stray, which is another one that appeared first at the PlayStation PS5 reveal, right? And that is another one where with that association of PlayStation, I forget if this is PlayStation exclusive. I think it might be PlayStation exclusive, published by Annapurna. I can see this coming out day and date on something like a Project Spartacus. Mm -hmm. And then as you go through, right, Little Devil Inside, another one. That was the, the premiere title at a recent state of play. I could see that as well, right? Something like Sifu would make, would would be great for that. You go through. Let, let me let me stop you. Let me stop you right there, though, because uh, I I think this is an interesting conversation here. So when it comes to whatever project spartacus is you're talking about like tiers and stuff which yeah. i want a little more clarification of what exactly you mean from that i mean are you thinking like different membership levels of spartacus when i say tiers i'm talking about specifically the the games right you're right you're right that so like what counts as spartacus and what's just not on spartacus at all yeah yeah, yeah that's what i'm gotcha. talking about. okay cool 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 yeah yeah, yeah I, I buy that because like my thing is what i think sony has to do is simplify this as much as possible i think the problem quote unquote of where we're at is the fact that there's playstation plus and there's playstation now and there's been like kind of just mixed messaging in terms of playstation now over the last decade whatever where no one's excited about the way they are game pass they need to put a new title on this they need to uh just kind of get all of the benefits that you get from the, these online packages put it in one place and we've talked about this for ever like it is like the most broken record conversation we've had a kind of funny on the mm -hmm. playstation side of things where just they need to just simplify it i think that xbox finally has gotten to that point where they're starting to simplify all that stuff down game pass gets you everything you you're good to go with that right i think on the playstation side that is the most likely outcome of what we're going to end up seeing which everything you just explained every single game you just talked about that tier of potentially coming would you not see potentially coming to playstation plus yeah but this that's the, the thing is project spartacus is going to be playstation plus right when this when when this uh, inevitably releases in what i'm going to assume is going to be spring they're i think they're going to brand it as ps plus and it's going to go from ps plus the ps plus being you have is just tier one of project spartacus and then tier two is going to be an expanded library of titles that you have and then tier three is going to be the backwards compatibility stuff and so naturally i think this all fits in and i think you i think the thing is you change how you talk about it and you change the messaging of it because i i i'm with you that the simplicity of Xbox Game Pass and them being able to go, hey, here are two two tiers, right? It's Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. Ultimate, you get both PC and Xbox, and you also get games of gold as well. Being able to, to communicate it clearly that way, I think is very valuable, but then also, that is why I don't love the tier th the three tier thing on the PlayStation yeah. side because I even me thinking about it right case, now, man. I have to really focus in and be like, okay, what? so tier one is PS Plus, tier two is this, tier three is this, and I think that's gonna lose a lot of people. Yeah. Right? Here's the question. Why would they do that if they're already getting your money for PlayStation Plus? You know, like companies like is your money. And if they can get it from two different avenues, great. Well, because they're, they're already getting it from the, the avenues right now. They're trying to now. No, I know. But if they, the if, they add, but if they add a, a third option that is, I, don't, I, I guess that that is already PlayStation now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the thing is so it's the combo PlayStation the now is somewhat successful when you actually look at the pure numbers of it but it could it could be more right it's that it's that um what was it wonder woman yeah or thing of like it can be more i think <laughs> turning it into ps plus which is just a better branded thing and turning it into a tiered system is going to uh i think it's going to do way better than what playstation now already does especially if you're able to figure things out because when you look at game pass and what game pass does well and why game pass gets it right i think it is games being on there day one which is a reason to be there it is backwards compatibility you know which is available on xbox anyway but you get a lot of backwards compatible uh games on game pass um that are downloadable right not streaming that is that's a strength as well you have cloud streaming on there um uh and like it 
I, oh, there was a fourth thing, but I forgot what the fourth thing was. But well, it's marketing. I, to me, it's marketing, and it, it's the it's the ownership of the value where mm-hmm. they have convinced the world that these games are free. That is the greatest marketing ever for high quality video games. It's like, oh no, no, like it's coming free day one on Game Pass. Like that's the way people talk about Game Pass. Mm. There's nothing more enticing to new users than hearing it's free, you know? And like the proofs of the pudding that's working now. It's been happening. Yeah. Like Game Pass is exploding. And it's like the the barrier to entry is just getting less and less and less. Whereas on PlayStation, it's getting higher and higher and higher, especially where we're at right now with how hard it is to get a PS5. But yeah, it's it's very interesting. I just don't you kind of saying like it's just PlayStation Plus. Like I I wouldn't be surprised if this literally just ends up being PlayStation Plus. Like they don't rebrand it, they don't do anything. It's just they oh, keep yeah. that name. I think that's one thousand percent was what it's going to be. That's interesting. But I, that I seems think like a boring I, move. <laughs> but but I I, 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 makes, I think it's sense. PS Plus. But I think it will be a hey, here's kind of a relaunch of it because you're talking about the backwards compatibility stuff too. Um, and I think that is the that I think that was the other thing I was, I was thinking about in my brain that I can I, I can pull is the fact that I think for this to be a success for Project Spartacus to actually hit, it has to. One, I think it has to have some sort of day one titles, right? And it could be what I'm talking about. It could be more, it could be less. But I think it has to have some sort of version of that. I think the backwards compatibility stuff has to be downloadable. I think you have to, I, I don't think you can fly with PS3 games being streaming only and PS2 games, PS1 games being streaming mm-hmm. only. And I think that library has to be some sort of like expansive in terms of you have like a good list of PS1 games there. You have a good list of PS2 games there. Because again, the PS2 games list on PlayStation Now is not great you know it is very minimal it is like 16 to 18 games on there and it's not even like great games right it's stuff or not, let me not say great games because they're great games but it's not popular games right it's, it's shit that i would talk about it's like dark cloud and shit that's yeah. on there well to be to be fair the xbox original xbox side of things on game pass isn't that much deeper than it mm-hmm. that's fair yeah but they but do I, they they have their enhancements and stuff like uh that that make those games infinitely more playable than <laughs> they were before which is awesome exactly right like i look back at games that i've played on xbox and packers compatibility and like please like like even perfect dark on there i'll play that and i'm like dude this feel this feels and sings differently on a current gen xbox system than it would back in the day um so i think it needs that as well and i think they really just need to i, th- I think it could work and i think they have all of like the tools there to make it work it's just a matter of are they going to use those tools or is this going to be a disappointment? And I, I, I think there's a chance that this could hit and it could be good. But it's also the thing of knowing PlayStation and knowing how much they value their games and how much they don't want. To, they probably don't want to put shit there day and date. It's hard to imagine that future where we're seeing like good first party PlayStation Studios game appear. But I think it could happen. Yeah, I think it could happen at some point. But I mean, there's just so much money that they are bringing in from it that like I don't, I don't. I don't think that it is an inevitability in the way that Phil's talking about it for that for that specific aspect of this whole thing. But I'm super interested. I can't wait to see what they end up announcing. I do hope they announce something soon, but I also don't want them to rush it. This is the type of thing that they got to get right or else it is just always going to be a, eh, I guess this is just the best thing that we have here and we're not actually going to get the thing, like the things we actually are looking forward to from this reminds me a lot of Nintendo Switch Online. I'll never forget when they first, when they originally announced Nintendo Switch Online and they announced the price and I was so bummed at how low the price was because it proved to me this is never going to be the system I want it to be. This is never going to give me everything. It's always going to be this dumb drip feed over time and then guess what? They added uh, another tier, added more money, and then it's like, yeah, this is the only way they could have done this because they fucked it up from the beginning. Damn it, Nintendo. Figure your shit out. Anyways, let's move on. Figure your shit out. Let's move on. Uh, Tim, we're actually going to keep this conversation going a little bit because the next story is all about uh, PlayStation and PC. But before we get there, I want to tell people about a deal because they can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where they can get the best deal because you can go there, get your questions read on the show, get your squad ups in, but you can also get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Sticking to your New Year's resolutions can be hard, but if you're focusing on saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook, or prioritizing your wellness, smashing your goals is a piece of cake with HelloFresh. HelloFresh has endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable by delivering pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm-fresh produce that arrives within a week. HelloFresh has 50 menu and market items to choose from every single week, including some more family-friendly or gourmet 
day choices. Uh, Kevin Coelho, Paula Coelho, they've been loving HelloFresh. They, of course, Paula, being a vegetarian, like the options of having the vegetarian stuff, and they've been having some fantastic meals over there in their Coelho household. Go to HelloFresh.com slash KindaFunny16 and use code KindaFunny16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash KindaFunny16 and use code KindaFunny16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Tim, let's talk mm-hmm. about PC games on play let's or PlayStation games on PC with story number two. Several PlayStation Studios asked to put their games on PC. This is Adam Bankhurst at IGN. Following the launch of God of War on PC, Sony Santa Monica creative director Corey Barlog has revealed that many of PlayStation's own studios helped convince Sony that it was a really good idea to bring its biggest exclusives to PC. Speaking to Game Informer, Barlog, who served as game director on 2018's God of War, was asked what insight he may have into Sony's decision to put a greater focus on the PC market. Quote, I think it was the collective of studios all over saying this was a really good idea, Barlog said. He continued, we should be looking into this. Eventually, I think it reached that tipping point. When we had sent so many suggestion box suggestions that they were like, I'm tired of hearing all this, fine, we'll do this. It's a process. We're still figuring it out as a company and as individual studios how to do this and what the process and strategy will be, end quote. Sony's push into the PC market began in 2020 when it announced it would bring Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition to the platform. While their games that were either funded or published by Sony had already made their way over, like Death Stranding, Horizon was a true first-party PlayStation Studios game that would no longer be exclusive. Following Horizon, Sony released Days Gone on PC in 2021 and is gearing up to make Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection available to PC players in early 2022. As for God of War Ragnarok, Barlog isn't ready to commit one way or another and confirms the decision is ultimately up to Sony as to whether we, we may see the sequel arrive less than the four years it took uh, the original to. Quote, I have no idea, Barlog said. Right now, we're taking it one game at a time, kind of looking at each one and determining, okay, is this the best thing? And we'll gauge how, how it does. Do people enjoy it? Did we do it right? Is there anything we did wrong? What can we do to, uh, better in the future if we do this again? But at the end of the day, ultimately, it's Sony's decision, end quote. Tim, this kind of piggybacks off of what we are just talking about in terms of the strategy for Sony. Do you ever see a future where Sony games are coming out day and date on PC? I, I mean, yeah, I do at some point. I don't think that that's going to be anytime soon, but they're building that out. And at some point, I think there will be a crossing of the line where it just makes too much sense not to do um i think that especially with the world of tech and like how things are evolving i think that things like the cloud and things just like the 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 availability of breaking down the barriers to allow more people to be to have access to be able to play the games i think will result in more money uh especially for prestige titles so at some point it the double dipping it will make less money than just putting it out everywhere that you can Mm -hmm. at as soon as you possibly can to get that moment of fervor and everything but there is the reality that playstation still has the strategy of wanting to sell boxes they're just in a weird place right now where there's no boxes to sell yeah yeah that's the thing I, I'm, I'm i'm right there with you i think i want this to happen because i think this would be great for everybody like especially for players being able to go oh man i want to be able to play god of war ragnarok in my with my widescreen monitor or with my nvidia dlss or whatever that uh, that stuff is right like i think there are so many benefits there in doing it and i think i could see the slow burn being once we start seeing a couple of like the play, the multiplayer projects that PlayStation has in the works start hitting, you know, things like, you know, tw- the Twisted Metal game upcoming, even though I'm sure that's not like a big premium, like top tier first party title for them, because it seems like this is going to come out in like a year and a half. That is a game that is going to be an online game. And there are so many benefits to having a game like that release on multiple platforms in order for the the um audience on the audience in that game to be bigger right like it, it is it benefits games like that to have a big player base and so between something like that between something like last was factions if that ever comes out god please let that come out and and again things like the uh, firewalk game the multiplayer shooter and maybe unknown games that they have in the works that could be multiplayer right like I think there's a big argument for putting those games out on pc and on console and maybe that maybe those could be the first wave of them testing waters in terms of putting stuff out on day and date because it does feel like they are 
they're building th these things out on from a business sense it's tough for me to see them putting out a bit like her horizon written west or whatever like god of war ragnarok day and date just because i think they have such a strength in that in that double dip and then also i think the 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 thinking behind it for playstation is still that these games sell consoles and it's pro they probably still see it as risky to put those games out on pc because if they do they have a thing of well why are we like this defeats the whole purpose if if we're putting these games out so they can sell consoles it's tough but i do think that it'll, it'll eventually happen it, it's interesting too because when you look at their their strategy so far it's been the big single player titles from a couple of years ago that are coming out on pc whether it's horizon uncharted god of war right and all those things kind of make sense delivering them to a, an entirely new audience or a familiar audience that wants to play them again with enhancements and all that stuff um and then it's also interesting to see that some of the pc versions of these games are also tied to ps5 versions of them as well like in mm -hmm. the case of uncharted right so all sony uh people like the sony consumers are going to be able to play the enhanced version of the game whether it's on console or on pc uh but the other side of it that i think is interesting is going with what you're talking about on the multiplayer front where everything you said checks out and is absolutely correct it's like we have seen time and time again that you need the player base for a multiplayer game especially in this day and age when uh every week it's like if you lose people's uh, people's attention it's like your game's done because they'll just jump onto the next thing or jump back to the 10 other ongoing multiplayer experiences that people are consuming day to day, right? The problem with that from the Sony side is twofold. One, mm -hmm. they don't have the multiplayer franchises. They never really yeah. have, and they still don't. And they have experiences here and there, but it's like, it's they don't have a Halo, right? Then on the other side of that, they don't have the infrastructure to do that. Whereas Windows, or Microsoft has Windows, has uh, Halo on PC and the crossplay, and that was a big focus for them that they built to so that it worked. And it worked enhanced by the cloud and enhanced by all the Xbox ecosystem stuff. So for what you're saying, I'm worried that Sony's going to try to do that, but just not have the, the oh, yeah. things prepared for it to work. And then when it doesn't work, people are going to write off the Sony PC side of things. And that, that sucks. And then we get a PlayStation Now situation where... 10 years from now we're talking about it and like oh well playstation fucked it up and even if they do things right it always is going to be tainted by this like cloud uh the bad cloud not the good mm -hmm. cloud not the good um cloud. but i'm hoping that's wrong but the other side of it is or they just keep doing what they're doing and put it out banger ass 10 out of 10 prestige titles on pc and they run even better with ultra wide support and blah 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 it's like that's an easy win for them you know yeah no, yeah, one thousand percent, and it's it's marketing, right? It's marketing that pays for itself. Mm -hmm. You know, it is marketing that you know the re the reason why um, God of War Ragnarok or uh, God of War twenty eighteen putting it out this month works so well is because right now plan to this year is God of War Ragnarok. You know, and like p the more people they that, that play God of War on PC, that means the more people that are interested in God of War and the more people that are going to want to show up when Ragnarok drops on both PS5 and on PS4, right? If they're not able to get a PS5. You know, either way, PlayStation is winning in that case. Yeah. Um, and I think that has worked out for them well so far. Um, but yeah, I'm right there with you that I think it will when we get there where it's like cool as PlayStation let's start putting some of our stuff on this part let's start having cross play between PC and and um uh, first party PlayStation games it is going to be a struggle like it is going to be a oh why doesn't this work oh why like <laughs> like is there a, play, a ps a playstation um network membership you have to have online is it is that what they try to implement like do they try to do it in like an original way you know like there's going to be there's going to be a, a lot of hoops to jump through in order to make that shit work but I still want it to happen. I still, I, I want oh, them yeah. to nail it. I want them, I want them to get it right. Absolutely. Uh, and so we'll have to wait and see on that one. Story number three is a really exciting one. This is one that a lot of people were having fun with uh, uh, the other day. Uh, awesome Games Done Quick 2022 has set a new record by raising over $3.4 million for charity. Uh, awesome. Oh, and, yeah. hmm, where did I pull it? I think I pulled this from Rebecca Valentine at IGN, but I'm going to do a quick double check to make sure because I want to credit correctly. And it looks like I pulled this from Adam Bankhurst at IGN. So thank God I double checked. Adam's article reads like this. Awesome Games Done Quick, the video game speedrunning marathon that raises money for charity, has set a new record for a single Games Done Quick event by raising over $3.4 million. Games Done Quick shared the news on Twitter following the week-long 24-hour AGDQ 2022, confirming the event had raised a total of $3,416,729 for the Prevent 
Cancer Foundation, and, quote, is officially the most we've ever raised in the history of Games Done Quick, another world record, end quote. Additionally, Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 reached the first $1 million in donations in the shortest amount of time in Games Done Quick history. Throughout the event, which ran on Twitch from January 9th through 16th, speedrunners from around the world showed off their incredible skills for a good cause. There were even a few more world records broken during the week, including Insert Logic's 28 minute and 35 second run of Kana Bridge of Spirits, so Jaxler's cool. 44 minute, 18 second run of Pumpkin Jack, which is a game I would never have guessed before speedrunning. I think How that cool is, is that though, right? Really like cool. That's just where we're at, especially with awesome games done quick, man. They, yeah. Seeing them grow has been fantastic. It is just so rad that we're getting creative things like blindfolded Sekiro and then also pumpkin jack hell yeah yeah and I, want talk, like, I want to talk about the Sekiro thing right because i don't know i don't know if you're on the timeline for it or if you're watching it i watched this shit live and this was maybe one of the most impressive things i've ever seen on twitch of this dude right uh his name is uh, is mitch riz he did a two-hour run of Sekiro blindfolded so only going off of sound cues and this is uh, the clip that Kevin is showing right now is him fi fighting the Burning Bull, which they're saying is like the most difficult boss fight to do in the game blindfolded because the Burning Bull, if you've not done this boss fight before, this motherfucker is everywhere. <laughs> he is like jumping all <laughs> over the place. You kind of have to be able to follow him and you have to be able to like, like essentially dodge along with countering and all that stuff. And so I think this took him quite a few tries. Um, but even still, right? This motherfucker defeated, um, uh, oh, what's his name? He defeated the apes the eight bosses in Sekiro, which took me days, Tim, to beat. Those bosses yeah. took me days to finish. He took them out in one try blindfolded. I mean, Fucking it's insane. insane. <laughs> I, I remember I, it must have been last year where uh, someone did Mario 64 blindfolded and watching that, a game that I have played countless times, put so many hours into, I don't think I can get a single star <laughs> with one eye open. <laughs> so I was actually like, going to ask you that question of, if you if you had to pick a game to try to speed run blindfolded, what would it be? Ooh. And my answer was going to be Mario sixty four, but only the first star. I think, mm -hmm. and this is me, like me, me with my own hubris, right? Yeah. I think if you gave me a week to practice and figure it out, I think I could figure out how to get the first get to the first star. Oh fuck! I had to fight fucking Bob Omb, don't I? Yeah, dude, that's there's <sighs> that would no, be the tough part. Figure no out. The, I think I could get to the top of that mountain blindfolded. Fighting him would be the difficult thing. That would take yeah. quite a few tries to figure out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the the for me, the thing that I actually think I could do, and not that this is that impressive, but Mario One World One One, I could probably mm. do. Like yeah. I could draw that level out from memory. Right now, like I would know where every single thing is. So then it's just a matter of like, you think, ah, that'd be hard. I don't know. I don't know. It's tough though, because I, are, are there sound cues for when you're running into a wall in Mario? No, 1? there's like if not. you're running to a pipe, if there were, I think I could figure it out. Mm -hmm. But if they're not, then I don't know if I could do it. Cause yeah, like, maybe not. I, there's, it's hard to like make that like perfect count in your head of like, okay, I just ran this far in the level. I need to, I need to jump here. I need to yeah. dodge this Goomba. It's a lot going on. In the chat, slightly sausage says challenge. I like it. And I like me, it. me versus Tim of like a blindfolded run. No, it's a challenge. It'd be the yourself. worst content ever. <laughs> just for some charity stream, we should definitely do that. Yeah, I, I, not I, versus sure. each other, but just no. do it. Yeah, I'm down to try this out. I'm down to try a blindfolded Tim, run. Tim, you think if I give you of Mario Brothers? You think if I give you a, a long sheet of graph paper, you could draw it like to the to the pixel to the squares? Yeah. Like you you think so? No way. Of Mar of one one. One one, yeah. I could I could definitely tell you the obstacles in order. I could not like draw to the picture. Sure, one. sure. But yeah, yeah, like when you you come through, you start one one, it's the fucking it's the no, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't boxes, have to. and there's no a one's... Goomba that you want to dodge, and then ooh, is it a pipe or is it a block? I think it's a pipe, it's a pipe. It's like the six pipes, and like one of those pipes goes down to the underworld. What? And we're definitely gonna use that. We're definitely gonna use that pipe, which is like the third <laughs> pipe, I think. <laughs> And then you go through that pipe, and then you're at the end of the level. You know what? I think I could do it. I think I could do it. Give me, well, give me a week. I can figure it out. See, because you always go down that pipe, you're missing out on, on so much of the the level that you don't know. But I know, bless. I know because I get that one up. I get that secret one up every you're time. You the whole level just for the one up. I don't need the Not one that up. One up baby. You gotta do it. No, nah, man. Nah, you know you don't gotta do. It. You don't gotta do it. Tim, mm -hmm. let's jump in. 
to we had two more news stories left and they kind of feed into each other a little bit so let's jump into story number four uh activision blizzard has gotten rid of almost 40 employees for workplace misconduct this is tom ivan at vgc Activision Blizzard has gotten rid of nearly 40 employees over workplace misconduct <clears throat> incidents since last summer. According to the Wall Street Journal's sources, Activision has received around 700 reports from employees concerning workplace misconduct and other issues since last July, a figure the publisher disputes and has so far reviewed about 90% of them. Activision Blizzard did not uh, or did, however, confirm that 37 employees have exited the company and a further 44 had been disciplined as part of its investigation uh, into allegations of sexual harassment and other misconduct. The Wall Street Journal claims Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick delayed plans to release a summary of these actions before Christmas as it could make the situation look even worse than already known. An Activision spokesperson told the publication this month that the board's support for Bobby is unchanged and it is pleased with the commitment and leadership Bobby has demonstrated so far in making changes. Tim. I've said this 10 million times. I'm going to say it again. Progress is progress. We're moving forward. We have to keep talking about this stuff because this is the type of results that we're expecting to see and they are happening. They're not happening as quickly as they should. This is definitely not as much as it should be, but we are moving in the right direction. But God, is it a bummer to say all that and have this end with they're still standing with Bobby. Yeah. What the fuck? How? How is this happening? How the fuck is he still in charge? This far into this, this this amount of complaints, this amount of firings, this amount of disciplinings, how the hell is he still there? Yeah, it is such a ridiculous statement to read in January 2022. Right, the fact that they're still like, no, yeah, we're 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 pleased with the commitment and the leadership Bobby has demonstrated so far. Being being be, being able to say that out loud as a statement is ridiculous. But I I am I. It's nice to see the progress of the employees exiting, right, and seeing seeing the discipline. Uh, in this story as well, I don't think I, I didn't include it in the actual write up because I didn't want to read the whole thing. But they were talking about how Bobby Kotick delayed the announcement of of this news or at least like pulled it back uh before christmas because they didn't want the bad press of all these people exiting which is again more bullshit and that leads me into the next story story number five which i debated including in here but i think it's good for news um uh story number five is from I, uh, rebecca valentine at ign video game ceos made tens of millions of dollars in 2020 uh, i'll read through the article and give a little bit more context right Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick's salary has been in the news on multiple occasions over the last year. And while he certainly makes significantly more than most, a new report shows that he's in good company with other gaming CEOs bringing in tens of millions of dollars per year. Games One has compiled a rundown of video game executive pay in the year 2020 based on company filings, including salary, bonuses, stock, and other monetary benefits. The report reveals that Bobby Kotick was actually not the highest earning CEO of 2020. That prize goes to Robert Antikal, CEO of Israel-based Playtica, which makes free-to-play mobile games. In 2020, Antikal made $372 million in total compensation, while Kotick brought in $154.6 million. $154.6 million. Damn. Fucking Damn. ridiculous. Uh, the article goes on, while they were far and away the top earners, uh, other gaming CEOs similarly made piles of money that year. EA CEO Andrew Wilson received $34.7 million in 2020, while Zynga's Frank Gabo earned $32 million. Take-Two, which just announced its intention to acquire Zynga, saw its CEO Strauss Zelnick pull in $18 million. Other notable names on the list include then GameStop CEO Just George eighteen Sherman. million. Step it up, Strauss. Yeah, Strauss. What are you doing making eighteen million? You see Bobby Kotick's pay. Uh, CEO George Sherman pulled in. This is GameStop CEO seven point six million dollars. Roblox CEO David Bazuki uh, earned six point eight million. Square Enix CEO Yosuke Matsuda uh, received four point two million dollars, and then Nintendo president Shuntaro Furukawa received two point eight million dollars, and Ubisoft CEO Yves Gamal getting just under one million. Think about that for a second. Yves Gamal earned as a CEO of Ubisoft just under one million dollars. Bobby Kotick three hundred or not three hundred. Sorry, uh, one hundred. Wait, where, where is it in the article? It's, it's a big number. Sorry, one hundred and fifty-four point six million dollars. Goddamn. Uh, in total, the forty-two gaming CEOs earned eight hundred and forty-two million dollars in twenty twenty. Notably, these are just CEOs for publicly publicly traded companies who must disclose CEO pay by law. 
Privately held companies such as Valve or Epic don't disclose these numbers, so there are likely a number of, of equally high paid CEOs missing from this list. For comparison, a handful of companies dis disclosed their median median employee compensation. Activision had the biggest discrepancy between CEO and employee pay, reporting a median employee compensation of $99,100, basically $1 for every 1,560 that Kotick earns. <laughs> GameStop was the second worst discrepancy, uh, reporting a low, low median employee compensation of $11,033, or $1 for every 650 that Sherman earned in 2020. Gaming CEO compensation has been under scrutiny in recent years. Kotick's pay in particular was cut earlier last year after repeated criticism, though he's still making $875,000 in salary alone before bonuses and other stock benefits. And that's a good thing to know is that in bonuses and stock benefits, that's where Bobby Kotick is raking it, raking it in. But these numbers are ridiculous. Yeah, honestly, the thing that's most surprising to me is the the gap between a lot of them. Like, especially, it doesn't seem to necessarily make sense uh based on the companies like take two being that much lower than uh activision doesn't add up to me but i obviously well, yeah. it's, it's I, not all just like an equal di to divide it's like it's, when, it, when it's this came not out, even scaled when the when the games one uh thing came out out of curiosity I just went through and i looked at all the numbers i was actually very impressed and surprised by a lot of it like team 17 which is a indie publisher that publishes like a lot of very small games, their CEO is making like $17 million. And that's more than Yves Gilmont. Uh, and so it seems like this has little, like, little bearing on the actual output of the company and more so just the gap that the CEOs make versus the rest of the company. But yeah, like, again, these are pretty wild. I think the Bobby Kotick one is very egregious in terms of what we've talked about in the last year, in the last six months, especially of how he's done a very bad job of CEO creating a workplace that is good for his employees. And that I, that goes from both pay to the actual environment that he's curated and known yeah. about and is supported in his company. For him to make that much is fucking ridiculous. And again, Bobby Kotick needs to go. And also, why the fuck does he stay? Like, at this point, just go. You have the money, dude. You got the money. You're not <laughs> staying for the money. Fucking leave. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Tim... <sighs> I can't wait for Bobby Kotick to, to leave Activision, and I hope that soon. But if I want to know what's coming out to Mom and Drop Shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today, we got Blade Assault for PC, Shadow Man Remastered for Switch, Dobo's House for Switch, Racing Classics Pro Drag Race and Real Speed for Switch, Top Bike Racing and Moto Drag for Switch, QB Adventures for Switch, and then Crystal Clash is out now on Steam. We got one new date for you. Diplomacy is not an option. An upcoming tower defense slash city builder PC game will now launch in Steam's early access on February 9th, 2022. Remember, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can get the show ad free. And you can also write in with your reader mail, just like Jordan Lee Rowan did. Jordan writes in and says, this is for you, Tim. Tim, I finally did it. I got my LG OLED, specifically the C1 series. And my God, Tim, what games do you recommend for me to play on my PS5? I do have a Series S as well, and I've already got Ori locked and loaded. Also, what should I watch on this beautiful TV? Spider-Verse is already in the queue. Thank you, KFGD crew. Oh, man. Well, welcome. Welcome to the whole new world that you're about to enjoy, where every single thing you watch is going to be better than it used to be, no matter what it is, whether it's beautiful HDR content or just normal shit, it's just going to look better. Uh, Spider-Verse is definitely the thing to watch. That is the the show-off piece for me because uh, of the colors, because of the black levels, everything about it beautiful uh in terms of games ori you're killing it you 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 got your head on right with this you already know what you're doing but if you have a playstation there's a lot of playstation games that really shine like i would say horizon is beautiful one of the first games to really kind of take advantage of hdr um but ratchet and clank rift apart uh any of the ratchet games but rift apart specifically is a a sight to behold that first level where you're in the like uh kind of downtown it's like nighttime neon uh everywhere that shit looks beautiful um and then spider-man uh miles morales is so so beautiful to look at like the fact that that game has the day night cycle when it gets to like kind of sunset oh my god swinging around new york with that oled don't get better than that 
God, Spider-Man is such a fucking good looking game. I was playing it a little bit last week just to go through the DLC. And as soon as I booted up Spider-Man Remastered, it was a fucking reminder of how good those games look on PS5 and how smooth they run, especially in performance mode. And now that they have performance plus um, ray tracing, mm -hmm. it is a delight. It is a visual delight. Absolutely love those. Of course, you can go to Patreon, or not Patreon, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you can write in and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Nina writes in and says, the Battle Royale that came out in August 2021 on PlayStation Plus was Hunter's Arena Legends, uh, which, you know, I, gotta, I, I, I need you to always be on, on deck for that one, because every single tr time I try to recall that <laughs> specific game, I am never able to get the title right, because that is the most generic video game title of all time, even though the game was pretty decent. Had a fun time in Hunters of Reading Legends. Uh, Nana also says that Stray is PlayStation exclusive and is coming out on PC. Uh, and that's it for me. That's or that, that's it for you're wrong. That's, that's awesome. It. Everything else is a little bit more context, but we did we're looking good. for the year wrongs. We're looking for the year wrongs. Uh, this week's host for Kind of Funny Games Daily Go Like This. Tomorrow, you're getting Greg and Gary Witta. Wednesday, it's me and Andy. Thursday, it's Greg and Tim. And then on Friday, it's me and Tim. If you're watching this live on Twitch, after this, is Kevin becoming a VTuber with Mike, Nick, and Andy? If you want to catch that stream later, you can subscribe to youtube.com slash kindoffunnyplays. Remember this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. until next time, game daily. <laughs>